Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. <clears throat> it's uh, Tuesday night, 5 p.m., 5 p.m. Just got my uh, my car service. Got an oil change on my car. Uh, and it reminded me of a story, of a, an incident that I believe is relatable to our lives, right? So I'm going to get right into it. So uh, in college, I got I had my first car, right, Ford Escort. Love that car. Right, I didn't have a car my first year in college. I didn't have a car my second year in college. I was in the dormitories. And luckily, I went to UC Davis, where it's the bike capital of the world, so I didn't really need a car, per se, to get around. But as you get older, you want a car. You want to be able to do things. You want to be able to drive around. You want to be able to go out with your friends. You want to be able to, you know, whatever. Get food, hang out, look cool. So my dad gave me his Ford Escort, right? I think it might have been an 84 Escort, right? A uh, little hatchback, right? And I loved that car, right? I used to wash it all the time. I put a bra on it, the front. Yeah, I think I might have had dice hanging from the damn window. Uh, what's up, cousin? So uh, that was my baby. That was my car, right? Unfortunately, I was good at the exterior taken care of. What's up, Chris? Right, the washing, the vacuuming, the cleaning. What I was not good at and still am not good at is the real car stuff, right? I'm not I, I'm not a car guy. I don't know how to change my oil. I barely know how to put air in the damn tires. Um, and I should probably feel bad about it, but I don't, right? I know, I know what I'm good at. I know who I am. Cars is not one of them. So I had this car in college. And I would drive around and I would, I would, you know, I would do everything instead of take care of it physically, right? So wash it, clean it, vacuum it, shine it, put gas in it, of course. But as far as everything else, like servicing it, putting oil in it, I didn't do any of that. So what happened was I had, I, I began to get a leak, an oil leak in my car. And my <laughs> my roommates would tell you this. I, I would I would go buy a quart of oil like once a week to put in this damn car, right? I, I would wait till the light came on and put oil in it, right? The driveway was full of stains from my damn car. Um, but instead of being responsible, right, as a 20-year-old, like I should have done, I would just keep putting oil in it and letting it leak out. So, surely enough, uh, some time into this, this stint of me knowing the car needed to get fixed and was not fixing it, I was going from, I was driving from UC Davis, from Davis, California, to Sacramento for something, right? Middle of the summer, uh, probably 100 degrees, and I'm driving across this, this long stretch of Highway 80 called the, called the Causeway. Right, no exits for maybe it seemed like ten miles. It's probably like three or four miles. So I'm driving along the stretch of this freeway, right, and I hear a bam, a loud boom from my car. Uh, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I know it wasn't good, right? I know it wasn't good. Uh, so, <laughs> so my car is smoking. What's up, T-Mac? Smoking, okay? Um, the hood is like full of smoke. The car stops running. I get out of the car on the side of the freeway, lift the hood up, not sure why, not don't have any idea what I'm looking at. Um, but I'm stranded. I'm stranded in the middle of this stretch of freeway with no exits outside of the opposite ends of this stretch of freeway in 110 de degree weather with no cell phone. This is 1992. No cell phone. No way to get a hold of anybody. Nobody to really call. I'm, I'm, I'm away at college. I mean, my, my, mom and, my, mom and, my mommy and daddy are two hours away. They can't help me. My roommates can't really help me. And if they could, I couldn't call them. So I was stuck, stranded. Right. So what did I do? Well, after I, I, I probably cried, I probably cried, but 
Shortly thereafter, I began walking toward where I had, where I had come from. I was halfway between Sacramento and the last Davis exit. And so I could have walked either direction, right? I chose to walk back toward home, my, my college home, right? So I'm walking. It's hot. I'm sweaty. I have no idea what I'm going to do when I get to where I'm going. I have no idea what my dad's going to say when he finds out my dumb ass didn't put oil in the car. What my mom's going to say. I have no idea what I'm going to do about a car going forward. I have no idea about anything. How to get it towed, where to get it towed to, or anything. But I, I knew I wasn't going to stay there. Right, Big Ray? I knew I couldn't just stay there, so I had to walk somewhere. Right? I could either stay there and cry, or I can cry and get over, get over it and walk back to Davis. So I walked. Right? And... You know, a few hours later, I got home and we figured it out. So, Anthony, so the moral of that story is many of us find ourselves pulled over on the side of the road in chase of our dreams, right? Or we're at a, we're at a position in our life where we feel like we are stranded, right? You, you know, you, you realize you're, you're 30 pounds overweight or you realize the dysfunction between you and your daughter or you and your son or you and your spouse has gotten to a point where it's almost unbearable and it seems hopeless. Or you decide in your 20s or 30s to go back to school. Or you decide uh, after you've been laid off, you want to start your own business. Right? All these scenarios present fear, present and a, a daunting scenario that is not much different than being pulled over or being um, um, having your car go out of whack on the side of the road. Right? These scenarios are no different than your car breaking down and, and, and you having to figure out what to do. Right? The reason you're there is irrelevant. Right? The reason my car, I was, the reason I was stranded on the side of Highway 80 in July of 1992, let's say, the reason was irrelevant, right? The reason was my dumb ass didn't put, didn't put oil in the car. But the reason I'm there is irrelevant, right? At that point, you have, you have an option. You can just sit there and cry about it, right? Or you can walk your way back to safety or walk your way toward safety. That's the only option. So when you, when you are confronted with a real life scenario that's similar to being stranded on the side of the road, you have one of two options. You can sit there and cry about it and whine about it and lament about how hard it's going to be to get your degree in five years or how hard it's going to be to, to salvage this relationship between you and your spouse or how hard it's going to be to lose 30 pounds that you gained over the last 10 years, or how hard it's gonna to be to get out of financial debt, or how hard it's gonna to be to do this or do that. You can sit there and cry about it, or you can or you can dry your freaking tears and walk toward safety. Right? So I chose to get to get out, get, 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 stop crying about it, and walk. Did I know what, what was gonna happen? Did I know how to fix it? Did I know? Did I, was I afraid of my father being mad at me? Of course. Did I have the answers to what was next? Of course not. But I knew I couldn't stay there. Right? So sometimes you got to figure out, uh, you know, what to do. Am I going to stay here or am I going to go and get better and move toward whatever my vision, my goal, my dream is? Right? No matter how hard or how daunting it is. Right? And more times than not, you won't know how to do it. You won't know how to get out of debt. You won't know how to fix this relationship you have going on. You won't know how to find time to fit in, study in, to get your GED or get a degree. You won't know how to figure out how to make time to get up in the morning to work out or to eat better or what to eat. You won't know, but you do know this. I don't want to stay here. You do know that, right? I know that, that walking 
towards toward that direction is painful. But I, I tell you what, staying here is more painful. Right? So sometimes you just, you, you just need to know, look, I'm not sure how far it is. I'm not sure if there is a safety net at the end of this journey. But I know what? I can't stay here. I can't keep doing this. Right? And so most of us are confronted with that very same scenario much of our life. Much of our life. Right? We're stuck. We're scared. It's too daunting. How did I gain 40 pounds? Right? How did I get stuck here, you know, being laid off my laid off of my job and not have any options? Because I didn't finish school. How did we me and my husband or me and my wife or me and my kids, how did we get here? Right? And so we're confronted with that thought many, many times in our lives. Many, many times, sometimes in a week or a day. And most of us ignore it. Most of us would choose to sit down by the side of the car and cry about it. And 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 use the whole woe is me mentality. Well, I got news for you guys. They ain't coming to save you. No one is coming to save you from this mess. No one is. You got to save yourself. Right? Right? You were you were in debt. You 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 messed around and left finance, Bobby, and started a business. You figure it out. How to get back on solid ground. No one's saving you. You might get some help, but no one's saving you. Right? You got overweight the last 10 years, 20 years. That was you. No one's going to save you. Right? This bond between you and your wife, you and your husband, you and your kids, you broke that. No one's going to save you. Right? So, so we have two choices. Right? We can either sit there, cry about it, lament, whine about it, numb it with food and drink and addictions. Or we can get out of our pity and start walking. Just start walking. Right? I, I done messed up a lot of shit in my life. Right? I'm imperfect in a lot of ways. But one thing that I'm good at is, is walking toward what I want. Right? This might be my, my thousandth video I've done. A lot of them. The first 500 of them sucked. Right? Were well, horrible. Right? I was, I was fearful. I was afraid. I spent an hour or two hours getting ready for him, right? Then an hour or two hours after that, feeling bad about what I did wrong, right? But I kept walking, right? I didn't know if I would ever get good at this thing or ever enjoy it or it would ever come to any fruitful production or fulfillment, right? But I kept walking. I knew I couldn't stay there. I knew I couldn't stay in the place I was at trying to figure out how to be great, hoping I could be great. I knew I couldn't stay there and keep wishing one more day, one more week, one more month, one more year. Right? I knew I couldn't stay there, so I just started walking. Right? I'm good at that, walking toward my dream. When I was eight years old and I, and I had a dream of playing football in college in the pros, I was skinny as hell, slow as hell. Right? And then three years later, and then four years later, and then six years later, I'm still skinny, I'm still slow. But I kept walking. Right? I knew at some point I was gonna hit pay dirt. Keep lifting, keep keep running. Right? I knew I couldn't stay where I was at, hoping and praying to get bigger, faster, stronger. Right? I wasn't guaranteed to get bigger, faster, stronger, but I knew if I stayed there, I was guaranteed not to. Just like you ain't guaranteed to lose 20 pounds. But if you don't do anything about it, if you don't start start fixing the problems and moving more and eating less, I'm guaranteed you won't lose weight. Right? That that mountain of debt that you find yourself in and you're scared to look at, right? You might not figure it out for five years or ten years, but if you don't address it, I promise you you won't figure it out. Right? The broken relationship you have with, with your friends or your kids or your spouse, right? Who knows if counseling is gonna work? Who knows if sitting down and talking is gonna work? Who knows if sitting down and trying to create some structure in your relationship is going to work. But if you don't do it, it, I promise you it won't work. 
So I'm good at that. I'm good at figuring out, okay, where do I want to go? Not how far is it. Not, not if I know I can get there. Where do I want to go? Right? If it ain't here, if it's not here, I'm walking toward it. If I'm stranded on the side of the road in my finances, in my relationships, in my, in my, in my, in my health and fitness, in, in my dreams and visions, like being a speaker, if I'm stranded here, right, and stuck in a rut and I want to get here, I'm going to walk toward it. Simple as that. The same way I did in 1993 when my car broke down and I could either sit there in the car in 105 degree heat and cry about it with no cell phone, no one to call, no one to save me, or I could get out, get out of my car, right, wipe my tears off and start walking. Right? It's far away. I'm okay. It's too hard. Okay. What's the alternative? What's the alternative? To stay here? Where you're at? To stay here? To stay average? To wish you could be better? To watch others be better? What's the, what's the other option? There's no other option, guys. There's no other option. No one's going to save you. Right? You have greatness inside of you. Right? And most of us, including me, including Coach Bobby, have areas in our lives where we sit there and cry about it, and whine about it, and mask it, and numb it, instead of walking towards it. Why? Because it's too far. It's too hard. It's too daunting. It's too scary. Well, you know what? In five years, you're going to be five years older whether you have that degree or you don't. Right? A year from now, you're going to be a year, a year older whether you lost 10 pounds or you didn't. Right? A year from now, you and your daughter are going to be closer, or you're not. You either walk toward that, that, that vision, that goal you have, or you sit there and cry about it. And I'm telling you that you only have one option in life, and that's to walk toward it. I know it's hard. I know, I know being stranded on the side of the road is scary and hard on the road of life. I know when you when you get on a scale and you see the number that's 30 pounds more than it was when you were at your peak, that's scary. And what's one day going to make a difference? A big difference. It's a step toward betterment. It's a step toward greatness. Right? You you, you pull your bills out and you, and you just go through all the numbers. I mean, how am I ever going to get out of this debt? How? You take one step toward it. You figure out something. Do a spreadsheet. Figure out where you can cut costs. Seek some help, an advisor. Right? Do something. Because you can't sit there in the car and cry about it. Right? And the reason you're there, as I said earlier, is irrelevant. Right? My dumb ass didn't put oil in the car. Okay. Whether whether it was it was it was it was manufacturer error or whether I, it was dumbass coach Bobby error. Either way, I'm stranded on the side of the road and I have one option, two options really, to sit there and cry about it or walk toward safety, right? And so I've had times in my life, guys, where it felt daunting. I'm going to have more. That's what's great about, about, about being a life athlete, a life competitor. I'm ready for stuff. I'm ready to fight battles, right? I don't hope and pray that I don't get them. I hope and pray God prepares me for them. Right? We don't pray. You know, if, if you're a true, a, a true believer, you don't pray for God to give you an easy life. What you pray for is the strength to get through a challenging one. Because challenge, because with, with greatness, with, with, with trying to be the best version of you, that comes with challenge. That comes with fear. That comes with setbacks. That comes with being stranded on the side of the, the metaphorical road of life sometimes. And wishing you could just sit there and cry about it. And wishing someone would come save you. But they ain't coming. The help ain't coming. Unless you help yourself. Unless you fix yourself. Unless you look at what you did to get there. Honestly, objectively, aggressively, spiritually. And you say, you know what? I'm not sure if if walking toward this 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 direction, this journey is going to work. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I know I can't stay here. 
I know I won't stay here. Right? I want that. I've been here long enough. What got me here is irrelevant. I'm not staying here. And so just like Coach Bobby did before he was Coach Bobby back in 1993, I got my ass up. I wiped my tears off and I walked back to Davis. And we figured it out. I made it through it. That's 25 years ago. I made it through it. Just like you will make it through it. Whatever it is. Health, finances, relationships. It's daunting. It's scary. It's big. But you'll get through it. We're too strong. We'll get through it. All right. That's it. That's today's message, guys. So so what are you going to do about it? Right? You, you, you're, at a, you're, at a, you're at a crossroads in your life. You're, you're on the side of the road, stranded, chasing what you want to be in life, chasing who you know you should be in life. You know you should be better than this. More money, better health, better relationships, better status. You know you better than this. So you're at a crossroads in your life. Right? And you realize it's going to be hard to get to where you know you should be. Where you know you should be. Where you were born to be. It's going to be hard to get there. But you also know that being here ain't good enough. That being here ain't who you are. Or how you're built. Or how you're born. Right? So what are you going to do about it? What the are you going to do about it? All right, guys. I love you guys. Have a great day. Hope that message uh, was good. You know, I, I, it came to me as I was getting my oil changed. So God just sent me a message, and I want to share share that analogy, that metaphor with you guys. Hey, Brandy. Hey, David. What's up, Oscar? What's up, Brent? What's up, Chris? Um, so yeah, please, you know, continue to to stay tuned. You know, I'm trying to trying to walk this walk, you know, with with you guys. Right, we all in this thing together, man. All of us. We all going through stuff. All of us. And so if I can just provide some guidance, you know, and some lessons, that's why I'm here. What's up, Raji? Um, so have a great day, guys. Again, if you wanna you wanna follow me on, on, on Instagram, Coach Bobby. Coach Bobby Blueford, follow me on Facebook as well. Uh and then, you know, we work out Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, guys. You can join us for a virtual workout like Teresa does, uh, and we can all get better. But, you know, it ain't over, guys. You know, we're stranded. We're at, we're at a crossroads in our life sometimes, some of us sometimes. And we have we have two choices, right? We can either stay there and whine about it and cry about it, make excuses for it. Or we can say, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to walk toward safety. I'm going to walk toward betterment. I'm going to walk toward the best version of me. All right, guys. Love you. Have a good evening. Talk to you soon. BTY.